that we were ready for career change. Uh, he wanted something a little bit more in creative industry. And, uh, you know, when I interviewed him, he you know, applied for a graphic designer position. And uh, he just didn't have experience and we needed, you know, somebody that can produce right away. But, like, I really, really liked Karen and uh, we kept in touch. And, you know, usually employers, when they tell you, well, we'll keep in touch, that's kind of like a girlfriend telling you, I'll call you, but you're like, I don't give you my number. <laughs> so, uh, we kept in touch, and uh, and Karen was really proactive, and, and uh, he actually kept sending me things that he was doing. Because I advised him, you know, I said, you you know, you need to show me, you know, some of the commercial work. And he basically started volunteering and started designing uh, uh, T-shirts and then CD covers for different bands and stuff, and kept sending me work and kept sending updates. And then before we knew it, Karen uh, got the job for Regina Symphony and became very, very active on social media and actually brought uh, Regina Symphony up as, uh, as one of the, he's going to probably talk about it, I don't know. He, uh, you know, Regina Symphony became probably one of the most uh, uh, popular or most active Twitter accounts on, in Regina. And, uh, and then uh, soon after that, uh, you know, we, we, we actually quite engaged with him and he, uh, Got the job at uh, at Regina uh, uh, Regional what is it, Agency Commission Rock, and uh, then uh, one day he applied again for Look Matters, and that was the third time he interviewed with Look Matters, and this time the timing was right, and Taryn was ready, and we were so glad to welcome him, and when we told our staff that uh, we're gonna you know we are hiring Taryn. They were like, whoa, we're going to be like all-star team now, excluding me, but like Tara and the other people that we work with. Everybody was very excited because Tara personally branded himself as one of the you know, most recognized social media marketers in Regina. And he did that without necessarily, you know, uh, you know going to university for it or getting letters behind his name and stuff. He did it with the hard and focused work. And through use of social media, the, the, the times are changing. The, these are the types of people I carry, and I'm very glad to introduce it. Hi there. Thank you very much for the introduction. That was very nice. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to be at Look Matters. I actually started there yesterday, so they were, they were kind enough to let me come to the presentation today. So, my presentation is called Advanced Social Media. Always time for good conversation. There's an ear for what you say. Now, the, the people you see in this photo, the gentlemen you see in this photo, are a band called Credence Clearwater Revival, which I'm sure most of you have heard of, and if not, you should definitely check them out. Um, they're a band that was very prominent in the 70s and 80s. Um, a lot of what they said doesn't necessarily, the, the content of what they talk about in their songs, um, I found, me have themed around war and stuff going on in the bayou, but I always found that when I listened to their songs, that the lyrics that they were saying actually pertained a lot to, to social media, such as always time for good conversation. So the basis of my presentation will, will kind of go around CCR and how it ties into social media. So I'll give you guys a quick rundown about myself. Uh, Zlatan did do a, a great introduction there, but um, I'm a former marketing communications specialist for, manager specialist for Regina Regional Opportunities Commission. I was a creative marketing and promotions manager for the Regina Symphony Orchestra. I was a freelance graphic designer, um, wow, for probably six to eight years, uh, I didn't work with bands actually around the world. A lot of, a lot of the clients I had weren't actually from Regina. Um, some of them have been, but generally they've been abroad, and that was all thanks to social media, and I'll talk about that in a bit as well. Um, freelance writer for Regina Leader Post, I've written for City Slicker Magazine, Sky Magazine, um, other publications around Regina, as well as various websites globally as well. I'm currently a board member for Sask Music. Uh, I'm running for another two-year term, so if you enjoy the presentation, please vote for me to be a board member for the next two years of Sask Music. I'm uh, a social media enthusiast. I'm also a John Lennon songwriting award winner, uh, music columnist reviewer. I'm a music critic for CTV Morning Live now as well every Tuesday morning at 7.50 a.m. So, uh, I'm also a polka advocate, and I've been featured in a social media documentary entitled What's On Your Mind that was featured on Shaw TV and Moose Trap. So I'll give you guys a little bit of a rundown of my success with the RSO. When I, when I first started at the RSO, it was basically a scenario of um, I was in charge of doing graphic design as well as a little bit of marketing but more social media. And my role sat down on a chair and they said, um, you know, make it happen. So a little intimidating when I first started with the symphony because I didn't know how do I, how do I promote, um, I love music, I'm very passionate about music, but how do I promote a symphony? How do I 
engage a younger demographic or engage people that are apparently fans of classical music through using social media because in the grand scheme of things, um, social media and classical music don't really blend that well. So what I started doing, I'll explain um, in the further on the presentation here, but I'll give you a little rundown of, of what had happened through, through my time there. I was featured in a social media case study at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, for one of the students. That was built um, because I built a relationship with Hamilton Philharmonic Orchestra through Twitter, and, and they had recommended me for this social media case study, which is which is kind of goes into the, the building of community. As well, we were voted one of the five nicest orchestras in the world by Orange County composer uh, Chip Michael, and we were also nominated as one of the top ten Twitter brands of 2011 by SocialFresh.com, alongside Pepsi, Starbucks, Red Cross, Rubbermaid, amongst other great organizations, and uh, we were also nominated for a Tourism Saskatchewan Online Marketing Award in 2012. So to kind of get the conversation going here, um, basically the first thing I wanted to talk about was look out your back door. So in the song, um, looking out my back door, Prince Clearwater Revival talks about, John Corby talks about getting home from a tour in Illinois, locking the front door, oh boy, sitting and just kind of in, enjoying life and, and listening to some Buck Owens. On well, social media, I find that looking out your back door is everybody should really take the time to you know, to, to close your door and just focus on a little bit and kind of and start, start learning how everything works and, and why people are doing what they're doing. And so that ties into learning your instrument. So I always find the musicians find an instrument they enjoy and they learn how to play it. So much like a guitar, a drums, it, it's, in the world of social media now, with social media becoming such a popular thing, you're going to see all of a sudden, you'll have Facebook, you'll have Twitter, you'll have LinkedIn, you're going to see, you know, 45 to 50 more popping up. And a lot of people feel that, that they have to get on board with all of those other social media sites and social media applications and programs, which isn't always the case. I mean, it certainly helps if you gear it towards your business. So, for example, if you have a restaurant, you may want to go on Instagram and take a lot of photos of your food to share with people. But what I like to focus on is learning your instruments. So find what you're good at. If you're really good at using Facebook, use Facebook. If you're really good at using Twitter, use, utilize Twitter. Um, much like learning how to play guitar, but if, if you know down the road you decide you want to learn how to play the drums, then, then certainly utilize that. Um, now, for Facebook, what I've compiled here is a listing of, of ways to learn your instrument. So you can follow a theme. So now, especially with Facebook timeline designs, what you can do is you can follow a theme with your background image, your profile picture, as well as your tabs. You can actually set those up and, and have a running theme through them. If you're an organization that does a lot of events, make sure your events tab is, is prominent. Um, as well as visual customer service. So with social media, nowadays, your customer service is just as important online as it is in person. Um, as somebody walking in the front door of your business, it'd be the same as somebody asking you a question, let's say on Facebook or on Twitter. You should always make sure you reply to the people um, you know, as, as much as you can and be a, a strong presence online when and where you can. But make sure people are happy. And if people have issues, always make sure to address those issues. And that breaks into tone of voice as well, too. It may not seem like it, but with social media, you can actually, your tone of voice comes across. Um, with my time at the symphony, whenever I post on Facebook and, and, and share stuff on Twitter, I never really followed um, the standard, hi, thanks for your request, or thanks for your feedback, you know, have a great day. I was, you know, I made it more personal. I'd say, hey, you know, how's it going? You know, thanks so much for supporting the symphony, and, and here's an answer to your question. So kind of have a good tone of voice, a positive tone of voice. As well, whenever you post stuff online, check your facts and spelling, and check grammar as well. It's very important. Uh, just do a quick, a quick double take on everything you post because it, it's you're throwing it out there, you're putting it out there for everybody to see. So, as well, um, photo details. So when you're sharing photos online, um, there's photo albums on Facebook, and even when you have stuff on Twitter, it's always good to have details about your photos. Explain why it was taken, when it was taken. Um, we used to do with the Regina Symphony Orchestra every time we have a concert. We'd actually have a photo album the following week with all the photos from the concert. Make sure to mention the musicians, the, the guest artists, as well as what pieces were played. I kind of keep people in the know on what's going on. I always keep the conversation going as well. So that kind of uh, goes on to when you're posting something on Facebook um, and you're asking a question, let's say, you know, what, what has been your favorite performance of the last year? If people reply, let people keep replying. Don't don't interject right away. Just let people start talking, but then then join in the conversation and keep it going and, and add your feedback and thank people for commenting and stuff like that as well. Um, with Facebook, what you can also do is pin posts to the top and highlight them. So highlighting basically means you can spread them across the entire Facebook page. And pinning stuff to the top basically means that you can keep it at the top for as long as you want to make it the most prominent 
um, piece of information because what will happen is the more you post, stuff um, gets scattered behind. Now, um, as well as mentioned tabs and at mentions. So at mentions are basically, if you like somebody's Facebook page, you can tag them whenever you comment, whenever you talk about them, and you just put the at symbol followed by their name, and it should prompt you up for um, pages to select. Always mention other people whenever you're with the at symbol because it tags them and it shows up on their page as well. So you're kind of crossing, you know, you're crossing two oceans. So you're, you're posting on your own page, but you're also sharing it with their fans as well. Um, and as well too, there's a feature like section on Facebook where what you can do is you can actually have, you know, your top likes. So when you're building your, your Facebook community, you should actually have, you know, people that are, are pertinent to your business or people that you've had great relationships with in your featured likes. Now I will apologize, uh, I just found out for the presentation that the internet went down, so I can't show you guys physically on Facebook how to do this, So, but we'll make it work. I can certainly talk to anybody after the fact if you need to as well. So, so what you want to do too with social media is you want to build a brand. So you want to seek out and meet other like-minded businesses with the same interests and goals. And what that basically means is that um, as a business, you know, why not why not join up with other people who share the same interests or trying to achieve the same goals you are, trying to, you know, maybe sell the same product, um, bring in the same clientele, join, join forces online and, and start a band up. And, as, and also too, what you can do is not necessarily businesses that do exactly what you do, but businesses that are doing similar things to what you do or that may accent what you're doing. So, um, for example, if you're a dry cleaning organization and you want to, you know, start talking online with, uh, with the tailor, you know, if there's a, a place that, that men's clothing and stuff like that, because then it just kind of seems to work out. You guys can work together, and it kind of makes, it makes sense. Essentially, you're building a band. So you might be the guitarist, and you might be really good at Facebook. Um, you might want to join up to somebody that's really good on Twitter and, and involve in the community as well, or, or, you know, get a drummer and get people that are, that are just very talented in other, other areas on social media. And then what you should actually do is get together with those people and brainstorm ideas and talk about your successes and failures and um, what's worked for you and what hasn't. Because I find that with social media, especially in Regina, is that there's a really strong community. And, and um, basics is that everybody in Regina is really nice people, great people to work with and work alongside. So why not build that community? Why not get to know these people, you know, through social media, and then um, share ideas and, and work together to accomplish goals. Um, so I'll give you guys a couple, or I'll give you one example here of how I built the band at Symphony. What I did was, when I started at the Regina Symphony Orchestra. Um, my, my executive director had asked me to grab a couple of concert programs from, from past years. When I grabbed the programs, they all looked exactly the same. And I, I literally couldn't tell you which concert was which program. So I got to thinking about how music and art, um, they just blend so perfectly together and it's just something that works together so well. And how, how could I get um, the RSO tied in with, with art in our community? So what I came up with was an idea, um, as a music fan and you know, as somebody who who recognizes uh, the power of collecting, let's say, vinyl or you know, collecting albums by specific bands. What we did, we, we merged with Mackenzie Art Gallery, and every concert in, the, in that season, in the 11 12 season, was actually the cover of each program was themed around the actual concert. So Mackenzie Art Gallery picked a piece of artwork that tied in to that specific concert, and inside it told you how it tied in in a, a story about the actual piece on the front. So these became collector's editions, um, and where we went from um, where we went from recycling a whole bunch of programs at the end of a concert, we were actually we were actually didn't, never had enough programs because people kept wanting these collector's items and, and they would keep copies of them as well. And then what I would do is I would always share those, um, I share copies of those programs online. And, and we, we McKenzie Art Gallery, Johnson Symphony Orchestra, then we talked about it together online, so it kind of helped build that band atmosphere. So one of the common things with social media as well is that a lot of people are hesitant to use it. They don't. Um, I, I, you know, people say I don't understand Twitter. I don't. I don't understand Facebook. What I've always found is, is sing your song, even if you can't sing. So, basically, these tools are there. Um, social media isn't the be-all and end-all of a business, but it, it's certainly a tool that helps you build. You know, you build your build your awareness, build your build your brand, build your business itself, get the word out there about yourself. So, so sing your song. You know, learn how to sing and, and teach yourself how to use these tools. And a lot of people say, well, what if I don't have a Twitter account? There's nobody gonna, you know, there's nobody gonna shop at my at my business, which isn't the case. It certainly just helps out. Um, it helps the cause, and it gets people to know you're out there. I've actually gone to restaurants because I've talked to them on Twitter, and they're they're great people to deal with. Um, and the same with uh, getting people, you know, from mortgages and all stuff like that, is that these are people that I've met on Twitter and that have engaged with me, that I've engaged with, or have shared information that I thought was really informative and useful. So, 
um, that helps build that it helps build that bridge between the two. So as well too, what are you trying to communicate? So use social media and figure out what do you want to tell people about your business. What um, what is it about? What's your song? What is it about your business that you really want people to know? And then what are your mission, visions, and values? So that's a it's a perfect opportunity for you to actually tell people you know this is who we are and this is what we stand for and this is what we believe. So now. Um, the next portion is from CCR song, I Heard It Through the Grapevine, from Cosmos Factory in 1970. And this goes back to listening to your audience. So a big thing about social media is that a lot of people are essentially are keyboard vigilantes and what they do is um, they have no qualms about, about being honest online, which is great I think. You really get some you know, honest feedback from people. So find out what people are saying and, and why they're saying what they're saying. And, and maybe address some issues or maybe use it to your advantage. Maybe people are complimenting you on a, on a certain thing as well. Um, and then how are you responding to find that feedback? Are you responding to that feedback? It's, it's very important that a lot of times people just want to be heard. So another huge thing is with social media is not just listening to your audiences, but it's amazing to think about how how much people actually are listening to what you're saying. There's Everybody's in tune with, with social media, with Facebook and with Twitter, and they're always paying attention to what you're saying. I'll give you an example. Um, on April Fool's Day last year, my wife was pregnant, and I just made a joke that we were having twins. And I still, to this day, bump into people and they say, "Congrats on the twins." But I use I sell it on Facebook and I sell it on Twitter, and it's, it's still people were listening. And it's really amazing to, to think that you know you make a comment how, how long ago, and, and you know if you if what you start if what you start to say resonates with people, they'll start to listen to what you're saying. So um, another thing is sharing your influences. So. Who influences you on, on in business, and who influences you online? Um, find those people that are really, uh, really doing amazing stuff online, or people that really impress you, and, and, and share with other people. Tell people their story as well, because what will happen is that if you share their story, they're more apt to share your story. Um, a good example is uh, Regina Police Service. They do an absolutely amazing job online, and so you, I always like to share what they're saying because it's really important stuff. And as well, they'll they'll share sometimes what I'm saying as well. So. Um, is there a specific audience who may be interested in finding, who may be interested in finding more about them? So, I always like to, with my involvement in the music industry as well, I always like to um, share anything SAS Music is talking about, or local artists that are that are trying to get their album out there, get their music heard. If I enjoy it, I'll share it, because uh, I find that you know, if I'm sharing music on a daily basis and people are listening to the music I'm, I'm sharing and, and giving me feedback and saying, hey, thanks, you know, thanks so much for sharing that song, I really appreciate it. Then I find that if, if there's music I want people to hear, I'll, I'll certainly share. So, and as well, sharing is caring. So it's part of the course. So this is a part where I, I did have a video here, but I um, we won't be able to access it today. But what I'll do is I'll tell you the story. Uh, become inspired. So this man here, this is Canada's King of Folk, Walter Osnick, who I'm a huge fan of. Uh, he's a legend in his own right, but that's another story for another day. Um, Walter Osnick, uh, they had a Bravo. Television station Bravo actually had a documentary called The Cult of Walt, and I'd caught it a few years back. And Walter Austin had um, basically told the story of his career and his life. He's uh, he's got an Order of Canada, Star in Canada, Walk of Fame. He's producing albums 99 and 100 right now. Over 50 years in the music industry as well. He's got three Grammy Awards, 21 Grammy nominations, but he's never received a Juno Award. Um, and the documentary basically went on to talk about how he'd never received this award because. Um, the Junos didn't recognize Polk as a category, so it wasn't enough contenders, which certainly makes sense. Now, so what I did was I, I thought, well, wouldn't it be great if Walter Austin could receive a Lifetime Achievement Award? So this was a couple of years ago, and what I did was I started up a Facebook page. Um, I started inviting people in the community that I knew loved Polk, and I got them to join my Facebook page, and they also helped me spread the word. I would, um, I would share Walter's music for people that may not have heard him before. I'd tell his story. I'd give facts about Walter Austin. And what happened was CBC actually got a hold of me, CBC Toronto got a hold of me, the National contacted me and, and said we'd like to talk to you more about your Walter Austin Facebook page. So what that transpired into was actually, um, they had asked me to send a photo, so I sent a photo, my grandmother and I go to Polka Fest every year, um, so I sent a photo of Walter, Grandma and I, from years back to when I'd met him once. Um, anyway, so CBC aired the story on the National, and it got a lot of ground, and it was, it was a great story. Um, and then what happened was I actually contacted um, the Western Senators, a member of the Western Senators, through Facebook, and said, "My grandmother and I are coming to Polkarama this year, and uh, here's here's the whole backstory of what had happened." And they actually dedicated a song to my grandma, and then we actually got to go do like a meet and greet with Walter after the show. So it gained a lot of ground, and it was it was strictly, I guess, what I'm trying to highlight is that I started up a Facebook page because I was passionate about it, 
and I was excited about the fact of trying to help Walt Trust make achieve a lifetime achievement award. It never happened. Um, I had to start up a new page for this year. The 2013 Juno Awards will be in Regina, April 15th, 21st. But so I started up another campaign again this year. But my goal was um, to basically get to get the word out about about all this man had done and the career he had built strictly by himself, by by being happy and passionate about music and, and sharing what he loved. So. I, and it, it gained a lot of ground, and, and CBC picked it up, and it just kind of showed, it showed me the power of, of social media that I, I would never have expected that somebody in Toronto would have ever saw my Facebook page. I'm just some guy from Regina that just is overly excited about folk music. So, um, if anybody wants after after the presentation, I can I can certainly give me your email address, and I can send, I can send the video to you as well too. So, so um, pay with passion. So CCR has wine um, from Proud Mary that um, don't worry because you have no money. Now, a lot of people say, well, social media is free, and, and so it's not, that, it's not that relevant and stuff like that, but I find that there is, there is time invested in social media. It's obviously manpower. Um, there's time, you know, there's personal time you put into it. There's, there's staff time that a lot of organizations of now will get social media, you know, specialists and enthusiasts to, to work for them and do stuff for them. But when you're using social media, don't, don't consider it, um, a revenue stream. I mean, it certainly can be, but you should always try and pay with passion. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, um, as long as you're, if you're passionate about what you're talking about on social media, whether it be on Facebook or Twitter, you know, you can you can build those relationships and you can actually build a clientele through that. So you, you basically build your fan base essentially is what you're doing. And the story about building your fan base is that when I started at the symphony, the first concert we had was um, one called Video Games Live, which is basically what it is is it's video game music that is done by a backing orchestra, which in this case was the Regina Symphony Orchestra. Um, ticket sales were, were, were pretty low, so it, I had, was given an opportunity. They said, you utilize social media, and we need, we need more people to attend this event and hear about this event. So I started thinking about how I was going to do this. And I also, at the same time, I wanted to build a younger demographic. I wanted to draw a younger demographic to the symphony page. So what I did was actually we held a contest where if we received um, a specific number of likes by a specific date um, for a specific number of hours, we would sell every ticket for $10 for the event. And the reason we did that was affordability, so a family of five could essentially go to the concert for $50. Plus, we built our fan base. So it actually went exceptionally well. We reached our goals. We, we quadrupled the number of uh, Facebook followers for the Regina Symphony Orchestra as well. We sold out the concert. A lot of people were very happy. Um, I personally sold over 300 tickets in our office that day over the, that time frame. And then I thought, well, how do I, how do I keep people entertained after the fact? I mean, you've gone to the concert, you've got your, your cheap tickets, why not just unlike the page and, and never think about it again? So what I did was, um, it's kind of a formula that I like to use whenever I, whenever I go online, whenever I use stuff online, is, is three very important terms are educate, inform, and entertain. So what I would always do is I'd always make sure I'm educating, I'm informing, I'm entertaining, or I'm doing a combination of the three. So basically, educating is educate, educate people about, you know, let's say, for example, who the Regina Symphony Orchestra is, or tell them about the concert coming up. Tell them why, tell them some really interesting facts about the concert. Inform them, inform them how they can purchase tickets. Um, inform them of, of any special things going on, any special ticket pricing, or any issues with parking, stuff like that. But also entertain them as well. So. I found too with um, when we had a, a concert. It was Happy 200 for Franz Liszt. It was his 200th birthday, and I found that how am I going to get a young audience who are into video game music to like the music of, of a Hungarian composer? And what I did was I actually told a really interesting story online that I found out that, that Franz Liszt was the first person to um, basically put fans into a frenzy. So when the Beatles had Beatles, Beatles mania in the 1800s, there was actually a thing called Listomania that people would. Um, would literally lose their minds when they would see Franz Liszt. They were so obsessed with him that they were stealing, you know, locks of his hair, stealing cigar butts. They were just trying to trying to touch him, and they pass out when they saw him. But back in the 1800s, they actually considered that listomania was actually considered a, a medical condition. So you had something physically wrong with you if you were obsessed with Franz Liszt. But it was a really interesting story, and it got more people involved. That this is the original Beatles mania right here. So, so. Another uh, CCR, hope you got your things together, from Bad Moon Rising, from uh, their album Green River in 1969. So, a few things about this. So, prepare for the worst, uh, get organized and plan your set list. So, being organized um, is so very important in, in all aspects of business, as well as, as personal and 
as well as online. Organization and content are key, so always prepared for any situation. So make, the, make sure you can actually utilize, like Facebook, for example, you have Facebook insights. You can track, you can see what people are coming and, and what demographic is, excuse me, is viewing your page. As well, um, you know, there's, Regina Police Service actually does What's the Fine Wednesday. It seems like a, a small thing, but they get a huge response. And what they're doing is they're actually informing people what's the they're getting them involved in the conversation. But they're also informing them and educating them at the same time. So as well, too, um, <coughs> plan your set list. So basically what that means is when a musician plays a concert, they actually have a set list of all their songs they're going to play. And that set list will usually change depending on the kind of response they receive to you know, certain songs they've played. Is the crowd standing still? Are they having a really good time? You know what kind of applause did they get? So always focus on your past successes. Um, try and find you know always work on new stuff, new material to utilize on social media. So past successes that you know you know certain things you've tried have worked, and as well you should really know your audience that you're being, that you're playing to. So so who's your audience? What do they want to hear? What have they heard? And what type of feedback did you receive from that? And what other set lists have you heard? And what did you think of them? So what are other people doing? And what have, what have you thought about it as well? I'll give you a couple examples here. Um, so, getting organized, Breakout West um, was a music festival conference and the Western Canadian Music Awards, and I was fortunate enough to be the marketing and communications on a host committee for Breakout West. I celebrate the music of Western Canada. So, what I did was um, they wanted me to be in charge of social media for a while, so I, I did that. But what happened was um, I thought, I'm, I'm certainly not a one man army. So what I did was actually, I enlisted a street team of people around the community that I knew were very prominent on social media, um, were also equally as passionate about music, and they helped out, and they would, they would provide content, they provide photos, they, they provide blogs, um, stuff like that as well, and it went exceptionally well. We actually had um, over 3,000 tweets the weekend of the Western Canadian Music Awards, and it, was, it, it seemed to be a, a tweet every second almost I would receive. So, and everything worked out great, and it was a great avenue for people to, to go online and follow Breakout West on Facebook or Twitter and say, this concert was amazing, or this venue was great, or I was having an issue getting into this venue because, and then any issues that would come up we could certainly address as well. So, um, And then what I do too for um, planning your set list, what I do um, with CTV Morning Live as a music critic for all the new releases that come out on Tuesdays, I do Twitter, YouTube, or sorry, I do YouTube videos and I share it on Twitter. So I make a YouTube playlist of all the new releases coming out because I found that it's easy to go on, it's easy to go on television and talk about um, the new Kelly Clarkson greatest hits coming out. But people, if you can keep give people an avenue to actually listen to that music and to enjoy it, then you're kind of um, and kind of utilizing you know, two avenues on social media. So I'm taking advantage of YouTube, but I'm also getting people on Twitter to, to visit my YouTube videos as well and getting the word out there prior to, to me going on. So, and so it's worked out really great. I've also done um, YouTube videos or YouTube playlists for other events. I used to do them for City Slicker Magazine for, let's say, like the Queen City Marathon and stuff like that. I dedicated a playlist to running music. So. And as well to the RSO, the new season is currently going on right now around the world, and basically what it is is they, we received a lot of feedback that people wanted new, interesting content, and so, and that was a lot of it was received online too. That people would say on Facebook, um, you know, I really, I really enjoyed the the concert last weekend, but I, I would like some new content, and so we took that into consideration and we listened to what people were saying, and, and this new season they actually have is all you know relatively brand new content except for a few choice concerts, but the entire season is. Is really unique and different. So, so um, attempt the impossible. So, I guess what I want to talk about here is CCR talks about in their song "Up Around the Bend." Um, fix your mind. On a, you can ponder perpetual motion. Fix your mind on a crystal day. So, what that basically means is perpetual motion is a motion that continues indefinitely without any external source of energy. Impossible in practice because of friction. So. Perpetual motion essentially is impossible, but I always, I always found it tempting impossible. Um, with social media, you can, you can you have that ability to try anything you want. Some things may work, some things may not. Um, to promote our uh, RSO concert, Swashbucklers, Pirates, and Rogues, I actually spent a week on Twitter talking like a pirate to anybody who would, who would interact with us. And as crazy as it was at the time, it, it really worked and it, and it got the word out there and, and that was actually used in another presentation by another marketing person in town here. But um, 
It was a crazy idea, and I thought, this will never fly, and this is absolutely bizarre, but it did work, and it got the word out there, and I had fun, and I, and I was certainly passionate about the concert, um, about you know, telling people about the music that was being played, so attempt the impossible. There's going to be things you try on social media that, um, that may work, and there's going to be things you try that don't work, but, but learn from the stuff that doesn't work and, and um, build on the stuff that has worked. So, I was going to show you guys a YouTube video, but I can't. But I'll tell you a story about attempting the impossible. Um, my wife and I got married on October 10, 2009. And prior to getting married, I spent a lot of time working with, with bands around the world, um, doing graphic design through MySpace. What I did was I would do stuff by hand um, before I utilized graphic design programs. And I was doing gate posters, and what I would do was uh, when MySpace was kind of a prominent social media site, I would actually, uh, um, I would have clients come to me, but I would also approach bands that I really wanted to work with. And I worked with one, one band from Boston, and the guy had sent me um, some CDs to check out. One of the CDs was a band called The Rabble from New Zealand. So I really enjoyed The Rabble's music. Um, and I approached them and said, you know what, I just want to let you know that I, I really enjoy your music. Because I had that avenue where I could talk to them on MySpace, and they would read my message, and I could say, you know, I just I love what you're doing. And they really appreciated that. And they got back to me and said, we like what you're doing. Would you like to do some design work for us? So that transpired into <clears throat> a couple of interviews um, for some music blogs as well. Um, I started doing design work for them, but the time came for my wedding, and I thought to myself, how, how are my wife and I going to have our song at our wedding? I'm, I'm very passionate about music, but I don't want to have Garth Brooks to dance as our first song, our first dance, which, as beautiful as a song as it is. So I wanted to have our song, and I have no musical talents. I can't play guitar, I can't play drums. Um, the instrument I learned is social media. So what I did was actually, I had contacted them. One of the, the lead singer of the band, The Ravel, had put out some solo work that was really beautiful. And I contacted him and I said, you want to write a song together for my wife for our wedding? So what we did was, um, we actually wrote a song. I wrote the lyrics, and um, he did the music. And then what happened was, the song was called The Brightest Star, and the artist's name was Chaz Valentine. And what we did was actually, I went online after the song was done. I did a few things. I contacted Z99. I got them to call my wife at work and play her the song. As well, I did an online petition that I spread on social media to get Chaz a grant to actually do a, a video for the song, um, much like the way Factor Grants work in Canada, New Zealand has New Zealand on air grants. So I use online um, people that, that I had interacted with, um, whether it be on Facebook, on Twitter, on MySpace, any, anywhere really. I helped them with the, get them to help me with the petition to get a video made. So the video was actually made. Um, and then as well, through Facebook, I had caught wind that the John Lennon Songwriting Awards were going on. And basically, that's based out of Manhattan, New York. So I decided to enter the song in the awards, and, and Chaz and I won for Best Love Song in 2010. Um, so we won the John Lennon Songwriting Award. And as well, the video was produced, and it actually has garnered now over 150,000 views on YouTube, and the song was number three on the New Zealand um, charts for the summer of 2010. So it was one of those attempt the impossible. My wife, my wife loved the song. We have the song. It's a song that the lyrics pertain to our relationship personally. And um, it, it worked. And it was one of those scenarios that without that bridge of social media to community connect with that artist, it would have never happened. So yeah, so basically, um, the crazy ideas you get in your head, you know, try them out and, and attempt them. So thank you very much. Do you have any questions? I'll start. Okay. Sure. Um, uh, you, you talked about, well, if you don't know, just jump in and swim. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so during the uh, election, I had jumped into the YQR votes uh, debate, and uh, it was quite a swimming adventure, uh, to say the least. Um, don't know if I did it right or wrong, but I, I sent out a whole bunch of different things about. Uh, whether it was the stadium or jobs, the previous mayor, the list kind of went on and on. And uh, there were a lot of attacks mm -hmm. that happened, uh, not just to me, but to a whole bunch of other people uh, on Twitter about that. Any sort of guidance on that? Yeah. Um, I mean, not that I have any clear, concise answer for how to, how to deal with that. What I've, what I've found with that is if people are very very passionate about something, if they're aggressive online, 
um, even just addressing them may help alleviate the issue. I mean, of course, it, it may not. It may make them even matter. But what I found that with social media is that, for example, like in, let's say maybe the stadium, um, I think a lot of the problem with social media sometimes is that people aren't given all the information. You know, and it's hard because there's only 140 characters on Twitter, and there's not a, a huge avenue to say I have a really, I have a lot of information to tell you. So I find that if you give people the information and kind of explain things for them, what I found with with when the election was going on, with a lot of the content, is that um, a lot of people just didn't understand. Uh, so what I would say, I guess, um, if people are attacking you, and if it is a, a volatile atmosphere, is just always try and keep a positive approach on it, and try not to lash back wherever you can. Um, I've always found that that's another thing too is that whenever I go online, I'm always positive. Even if people are upset, we can we can resolve this issue in a in a positive adult manner. So yeah, I mean it's certainly hard. I, I know it'd be hard too that if you're having you know if you get 40 tweets and people are upset, how do you how do you stop? Sometimes you can't. I mean some people you can't be reasonable can't be reasonable with, but certainly try and always take the high road. And people are respected for that. So always just try and be positive and confirming confirming your you know what you're trying to say. So. What about all these parody accounts? There was a lot during yeah. the um, That, yeah, a lot of the, I guess with the, with the Twitter parody accounts is you almost just have to ignore it. There's nothing else you can really, how do you, because what you do is that if there's parody accounts, so let's say after today, everybody in the room started making up Terran Cochran parody accounts and making fun of me and stuff like that, hopefully it doesn't happen. Um, if that did happen, if you if you acknowledge them, it just fuels the fire essentially. So it's best to ignore them, right? Because sometimes people that you know people want to be heard, and so you know sometimes people that are trying to get heard don't deserve to get heard, especially when you're taking a low road like that. So yeah, hopefully it helps answer the question. Yep. It's a it's a tough scenario, yeah. Any more questions? All right, thank you very much, everybody. Oh, sorry. From a corporate perspective, yes. Um, should every business have social media, or are there some that um, it's probably best not to wade in? I think, you know, honestly, I think so. I think you should, you should allow employees to have access to social media, and people should use it. Um, there always comes a question of, well, what if people are just playing around all day and but if you have, you know, if you have employees like that, they're going to find other ways not to work. So, I think it's good to have social media because you can see what other people are doing online, um, and you can, and it's a great way for them to learn. I built, if, if you know, if I wasn't allowed to go, you know, with my time at the symphony, if I wasn't allowed to utilize social media, or even at Regional Regional Opportunities Commission, if I wasn't allowed to use social media, I wouldn't have built a lot of relationships that I built. Um, there was people that I actually met prior to having physical meetings with them. I met them on Twitter. So I think it helps, it really does help. So I think it's important to, to allow people access. It's a, it's a great tool, I think, so. So then on the other side, should, should every organization have a presence? I think so, yeah. I think it's very important, <coughs> yeah. And um, I know a common concern for people is being light on the time, and I, I certainly understand that. Um, you know, in a, in a work day, you, you may get really swamped. But I found that, I've always thought about that, how do you find time to do stuff, or how do I find time to go on Twitter or Facebook, because I don't certainly want to neglect other things that are very important to take care of, the tasks at hand. Um, but I found that, much like the days before email came into, into play, all of a sudden email comes into play and everybody says, well, I, I'm taking phone calls all day, I don't have time for emails, but you just kind of adapt, you kind of find those times where you can fit it in, you know, you find those, you know, if you have a spare five minutes or something like that, and um, I think wherever you can, it, it's, it's good to find find a time and a place to utilize social media, and whether it be it depends what works for you too. What works for certain businesses may have you know slot an hour in the morning to, to go on social media, and routinely throughout the day is check to see if anybody's responding or asking questions about something you've posted, and reply to it you know as soon as you can. Um, yeah, so I, I think that is very important for because there's a lot of organizations that actually that do. If you look at a, for example, Delhi Lama's restaurant downtown. And they do exceptionally well on Twitter, and they talk about the specials they have going on, and they um, they engage people, and they've actually got a lot of people going to their establishment because they know them on Twitter, and they're really nice people. And you know, if you're sitting at work and you think, what am I going to do for lunch, and you go on Twitter, oh wow, I didn't know that's that's what they're having today. So it kind of helps. Yes, it is. Yeah. 